Boston is a city on edge this morning. An MIT police officer is shot and killed, and police swoop into a suburb following reports of gunfire and explosions. This is the CBS Morning News for Friday, April 19th, 2013. Good morning, good to be with you. I'm Anne Marie Green. Well, this morning there is breaking news out of the Boston area. Dozens of law enforcement officers converged on a suburb shortly after an MIT police officer was shot and killed, and just hours after the FBI released photos of two men suspected in the marathon bombings. Watertown is located about 10 miles west of Boston. A witness recorded what appears to be numerous gunshots and an explosion. Just listen. Now, CBS's Don Daler is in Watertown this morning. Don, good morning. What can you tell us? Good morning, Anne Marie. Well, right now we're preparing for a press conference. State police is expected to come out to give us the latest anytime. Of course, we'll bring that to you. But right now, let me set the stage here. Watertown, as you said, is outside of Boston across the Charles River. At 1040 this evening, there was a shootout involving an MIT police officer and two individuals, described as at least two individuals. One officer is dead. A transit police officer has also been injured. Now, we're not sure if that happened in the initial event or if it happened in the subsequent gunfight with these two suspects. Uh, the residents in this area describe hearing numerous gunshots as well as an explosion, at least one explosion. One eyewitness describes two individuals in a dark SUV who are engaging in gunfire with a number of police officers. While that was going on, one of the individuals was described as bringing something out of the vehicle and rolling it on the street. That item exploded. We don't know exactly what that was, but eyewitnesses do describe a very large explosion that actually lit up the sky. Thousands of police have descended on this area and actually have cordoned off a large portion of Watertown itself. In fact, we keep mo being moved back intersection to intersection to intersection as they widen out this cord because they are still looking for at least one suspect. We know that they are going on a house to house search. It's an incredible manhunt here. We literally have seen hundreds of police cars, SWAT teams, command centers pulling into the area here as they continue to look for, again, at least we know of one suspect who is still at large. Now, the events have been moving rapidly since the bombings that occurred on Monday. I have to make a point here that the FBI is not confirming that this is related to the marathon bombings, but of course there are correlations, especially if an explosive device was used by these suspects. That bombing, of course, happened on Monday afternoon. Three people were killed, over 160 injured. Earlier today, the FBI held an unprecedented press conference. We have never seen this before. They actually presented the public with video, actually high quality video of two suspects, two persons they are looking for, as well as photographs. Now, the FBI's website has been overwhelmed with people looking at the videos, looking at the photos, but also sending messages to the FBI, tips. There have been an unprecedented number of phone calls coming from all over, people who may have recognized these two individuals. But right now, again, let me just give you the facts that we know them. There is one Massachusetts Institute of Technology police officer who has been shot dead. A transit police officer is in the hospital. There is one suspect in custody and at least one suspect still at large. Police are looking in Watertown, Massachusetts for that individual. Anne-Marie. Uh, Don, before you go, you mentioned that police officers keep moving you back, expanding the restricted area. Are they giving you an explanation as to why they need you to move back? Yes, they are. They say that the individual they're looking for is exceedingly dangerous. I mean, you can imagine anyone who would engage in gunfire with police. There's one eyewitness report, in fact, who says that this individual jumped in the SUV after this gunfight with police and drove it right at the police line, crashing through the police line. We don't have an independent confirmation of that, but the New York Times quotes an eyewitness as describing that. So the police are concerned for our safety, but they're also trying to make sure that they find this 
individual. So they continue to move us back. I think we're here for a while. The state police said that they're going to come to this location right here and give us the latest as soon as they can. All right, Don Daler in Watertown, Massachusetts. Thank you very much, Don. Well, as you heard earlier this morning, the FBI released new enhanced photos of the suspects in the marathon bombing. One's wearing a dark cap, the other is wearing a white baseball hat worn backwards, and they're seen together on the sidewalk near the marathon finish line. Susan McGinnis is also in Boston. Susan, good morning. Anne Marie, good morning. You know, these fast changing developments that have been happening overnight, including the arrest in Watertown, the manhunt for another suspect, the earlier shooting at MI. All of these events happening so quickly after that press conference where the FBI uh, revealed those videos and started this flurry, this incredible flood of responses from the public. Uh, it's no wonder that Boston is back on edge. The images are dark, but the sounds of gunfire and explosions rang out in the early morning hours, about 10 minutes from downtown Boston. Police are out in force in the community of Watertown, where the shots were heard. The FBI and Cambridge Bomb Squad are there as well. The search follows a police officer being shot and killed on the MIT campus late last night. We're not sure if the search is connected to Monday's marathon bombing, but this is a city on edge while the bombing suspects remain on the loose. We are working methodically and with a sense of urgency to identify those responsible for the bombings. Thursday, the FBI released these images of the two men they are calling suspects in the marathon bombing. Both are seen carrying backpacks, and though they aren't walking together, officials say they have strong evidence the men are connected. This man, called Suspect 2, was seen putting his backpack down at the site of the second bombing and then running away when the first bomb exploded. The response to the FBI's appeal for help in finding the suspects has been overwhelming. Within minutes of the release, the Bureau's website crashed because so many people had logged on to look at the videos and the pictures. CBS News has confirmed that this photo, which has gone viral on social media sites, is authentic. It shows suspect two in the aftermath of the bombing. During a memorial service Thursday, President Obama vowed to hunt down the bombers. So we will find you. And yes, you will face justice. The president also said Boston will not cower in fear. He says next year's marathon will be better than ever. Now, the FBI has told CBS News it has not yet officially connected tonight's events in Watertown, the apprehension and the manhunt for a suspect, nor the uh, shooting of a, of a campus police officer at MIT with the marathon bombing. Uh, but we are awaiting this, uh, this press conference coming soon, Anne-Marie, to uh, find out more. All right, Susan McGinnis in Boston. Thank you, Susan. Well, as we continue to follow this breaking news, we're going to go live to our Boston affiliate, WBZ. Uh, that a police officer had been shot on the MIT campus and that the campus was in lockdown. Two hours ago, the FBI put out the enhanced photographs of the two men they believe are prime suspects in the deadly bombings at the marathon on Monday. Uh, earlier, they'd released the video and photographs of these two men together and separately. The photograph they put out at 2 o'clock showed both men uh, enhanced in such a way that you could make them out very, very clearly. I guess if there's a good news, bad news situation for where we are now. At 4.08 in the morning, some you know five and a half hours after this all got going, um, we know now there's a perimeter set up in Watertown, so we're, I, I guess we are to either assume or to believe that this person is still locked somewhere in that perimeter and perhaps trying to hide. If that's the case, then at least now we know it's a confined space. We know they're not going to let vehicles come in and out of there, so this guy's not going to drive out, so he's on foot. If that's the case, then they have to go door to door and try and track this guy down, find out where he's hiding. And clearly, I mean, from all the shots that we have heard for some of the gunfights that were caught on tape, the explosions, I mean, there is some obviously reason for them to be very concerned and very apprehensive about this particular search that they're about to conduct. I'm sure they've already been doing it. And since we're behind the curve as far as getting information, uh, maybe for all we know, they already have this person. Perhaps this guy may be dead too. We don't know. But suspect number one is dead. And I'm now 
uh, to assume that the video we have of the guy on the ground who was stripped naked, he may have just been some guy in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they just weren't taking any chances. We should point out that video came to us from CNN, but the video that you're describing of the person who had been stripped down is separate from this video. Um, this is someone who they put in a car, and we, we can actually show you that uh, at some point while we're talking here. Um, but right now, we don't have any confirmation who's who in right, this. Right. Just that we have the potential for two suspects. One is dead, one is at large, and our partners at the Boston Globe reporting that a source close to the investigation that they have been talking to says that one of these suspects is in fact connected to the bombings at the finish line. And I guess it wouldn't seem such a reach given the level of violence that we're seeing here and the level of violence that was perpetrated on our Boston Marathon on Monday. Again, where we stand now at 410, we know that we're just looking for a second suspect. And who's that, I'm sorry? Lauren's on the phone with us? All right, let's talk to Lauren for a second. Lauren, where are you and what do you got? Well, we are here um, at uh, Nickel Street in um, in Watertown, and uh, what we can tell you now is that this uh, place actually seems a little calmer than it was just... This is a CBS News special report. I'm Anne Marie Green at CBS News headquarters in New York. There is a major development in the case of the Boston Marathon bombing. CBS News has learned that one of the men suspected in the bombing is dead, and there is a massive manhunt underway for the other. On Thursday afternoon, the FBI released video of two men it called suspects. The video was taken just before the two bombs exploded near the finish line of the race on Monday. So once again, CBS News learning that one of the men the FBI called a suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing is dead and another is at large. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Anne Marie Green, CBS News, New York. Driven around in nearly every parking lot, um, blocking off streets that, that seem so far from the scene. And, and as you mentioned, that is, you know, a 20 block crime scene. What we still haven't seen yet are police officers really going door to door in neighborhoods, um, at which we'd heard they might do earlier, but now it seems like they're they're giving people the warning that if someone knocks on your door, call police. Um, um, don't open it. So, so just wanted to check in, and um, this is just such an evolving situation, but that latest press release really seems to be answering some of the questions that we had earlier. Right, in, in some cases in the worst possible way with respect to this transit police officer who rushed into the scene and was shot there. Uh, Lauren, if you can, give us a, a sense from where you started um, there um, on Mount Auburn Street. Street. Uh, how far back you've been moved? Well, we were moved, um, we were on Mount Auburn Street. We were moved back probably about a quarter of a mile. And at that point, it was pretty clear that on Mount Auburn Street, where we were, um, there, there just really wasn't a lot of activity anymore. It was more staging, um, more place to keep people. So, so we moved on from there quite a while ago. And if you get off of Mount Auburn Street, you get back into these neighborhood streets like uh, Nichols, Melendi Street, um, Dexter Street. That was where the real action was happening. And it's all within... You know, within a mile. It's, it's a neighborhood. Um, and, and like a neighborhood, there's a lot of people who live there. There's a lot of homes. And people were very confused by what's going on. But, but really, for blocks and blocks, they had heard those gunshots. They had heard those explosions. So they knew that there was something very dangerous happening in their neighborhood. I would say the most activity that we saw um, in this neighborhood was over when we were by Dexter Street and Hazel Street in that area. That's where we were seeing those um, police cars really uh, staging, really coalescing around an area and where we were seeing those officers on foot um, walking in almost as if they were, were heading in a SWAT formation. Now, we can't get back into that area now because um, that the perimeter has expanded so much that we're not able to get back in there. However, the people in their homes were allowed to stay there. They were just being told to stay in the house. Now it seems a lot of the activity has moved over along the river where we know they were looking for that second suspect. That's quite a ways from where we are. That's a drive. 
So the, sus- the second suspect would have covered some territory to get there. Um, and, of course, you know, this has spread really not just in Watertown. People in Cambridge have been affected. People in Boston have been affected. Um, the suspect who, who later died, we're learning, um, was taken to a Boston hospital that was under lockdown. Uh, so, so this is a manhunt and an investigation that is impacting so many communities in such a vast area. Um, of Boston and Cambridge and the surrounding communities. It it really is all-encompassing. And in 